Working with Azure Digital Twins might not always be easy. Uh, it's actually kind of simple leveraging the Azure Digital Twins Explorer tool. And Riley from the ADT team is here to tell us everything you need to know about ADT Explorer. That's today on the IoT Show. Hi, everyone. This is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Let's talk Digital Twin Explorer today. We have Riley for that. Riley, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to talk today about the Azure Digital Twins Explorer. Well, actually, thank you for your time uh, and to share with us what you guys are doing these days. Uh, that's going to be a tool that will be very useful for developers working on IoT solutions, especially when Azure Digital Twins are involved. But before we get to it, Riley, who are you? What are you doing these days at Microsoft? Yeah, uh, I'm a PM with the Azure Digital Twins team. I've been here for a couple of years, um, and I'm mainly focused on visual developer tooling in the platform. Um, this is from the Azure portal configuration all the way into um, Azure Digital Twins Explorer kind of data plane type configuration. Um, yeah. Lots of things that developers love because they can focus on their code and they can leverage your tools to make their life easier. In the case of Azure Digital Twins Explorer, um, so people, if they want to learn more about Azure Digital Twins, we have other episodes for that. Uh, that's a service on Azure that allows um, building models of your things, species, people, and applying intelligence on top of that with qu queries and so on. And so what is Azure Digital Twins Explorer for? Sure. The Azure Digital Twins Explorer is effectively a way to be able to visualize these kind of complex graph and spatial type concepts um, in one easy tool uh, to help build your queries, your twins graph, and your uh, models ontology. Um, it really kind of simplifies that journey into one easy interface. Now we, uh, we know the audience here is, is mainly developers. So I suppose the answer is easy, but who is the ADT Explorer tool for actually? Is it for the operators of an IT solution? Is it for um, the developers building the solutions? Tell us a bit more about that. Totally. Uh, it's definitely more for the cloud developer persona. Um, we've kind of recognized that the Azure Digital Twins REST APIs and SDKs are really great for you know, scaling up and automating your solution. Um, but when you're just at that prototyping stage and trying to validate your, your build as you're developing it, um, it's really hard to conceptualize what your graph actually looks like. So uh, the Azure Digital Twins Explorer really helps you visualize, validate, and modify um, your Twins graph as you're building it. All right. Let's show us. Let's go through that. Absolutely. So I would love to walk through a, a kind of a, a real life scenario of um, what this looks like um, from the role of a cloud developer. So today, yeah. So today, one of my teammates um, has been working on this great smart cities digital twin of the city of Redmond. Um, it's still in pretty early stages, so she wanted me to review it and add some capabilities to the digital twins graph. Um, so I want to first understand what she's modeling, verify that she's modeled it comprehensively. Um, and then finally add some capabilities. So looking over at the um, Explorer interface, you can see that I'm linked to the Smart Cities Explorer demo instance. Um, if you're coming over from the Azure portal, uh, this uh, information is pre-populated for you and you are already linked up, but you can always switch to different instances by adding the Azure Digital Twins host name here. So um, first of all, we can recognize here that uh, there's no digital twins data in this instance currently. Luckily for us, my teammate has given us a file to import the state of her instance into ours. Uh, this file contains all the DTDL models in the Azure Digital Twins instance, as well as a section of the current digital twins graph. You can export these files directly from the Explorer um, and choose which subgraph you're exporting. So if I import this JSON file, then what I'm really doing is copying her instance into mine. So I'll go ahead and check out what this file looks like. Immediately, we can see the graph preview, uh, which makes, lets me validate that this is actually the data that we want to upload. This all looks good to me, so let's go ahead and start that import. And so what we're saying here um, visually is, is the, the digital things and their relationships, right? Yes, so what we're, what we're uploading here is not only the things and the relationships uh, to each other, but also the, the models that define um, how you can create and how these twins can interact with each other. Got it. 
Sweet. So we have an import, a successful import here. Um, 61 models, 26 twins, and 25 relationships. Um, this is so. This is where I need to refresh the screen. Um, I'm gonna hop back to the twin graph and just refresh. Awesome. So now that we've um, uploaded the instance data to our instance, let me go ahead and get the entire twins graph here by using the Query Explorer. Uh, now that we have this data pre-populated, I would love to do a quick little tour of the interface to point out which which features and uh, what they do. Um, okay. As I just yeah, as I just mentioned, the Query Explorer uh, allows you to save and build queries um, that you can execute and view the results on the Twins Graph uh, Viewer. In the Twins Graph Viewer, you can edit and view twins and their relationships by clicking around uh, and see their properties in the uh, Properties pane. Uh, as well in the Properties pane, you're able to click in and even edit those uh, properties and components right from the pane. Hopping over to this models view, you can see a flat list of all your models with some delete and uh, create twin uh, capabilities, as well as you can click into the twin or the model and see the DTDL file associated with it. Okay. Yeah, another great way to view your models is actually in the models graph, where we can slide in and see all of the uh, models and how they relate to each other, we, whether that be interfaces, or inheritances, components, and the relationships. Uh, this models graph viewer is super useful because you can really understand how your, your ontology relates to each other um, and uh, how you can build using this ontology. So well, one thing that might... A couple of things we did not mention. Um, well, the first one I realized is that you're using a web browser. The tool is in a web browser. So just wanted to just put it out there, uh, you, you can use that tool on the Mac, on Linux and Windows. You don't need any specific tool installed uh, locally, right? And and the second thing was more of a question. So if I had to work manually with digital twins, you know, with that data, without this tool, what would I be dealing with? Like bunch of DTD, like DTDL files like all over the place that I would have to correlate and, and make sure that they all link to each other and so on correctly manually? Yeah, uh, today, you know, prior to this tool, you had to have a lot of these models in, um, you know, folder directories on your computer uh, and edit them, kind of edit each of the uh, strings effectively manually in VS Code or, or whatever tooling you prefer, um, and use either the CLI, the SDK, or the APIs uh, to upload these kind of somewhat manually or in an automated fashion. Uh, this tool really just makes it so that you can do all this in one spot. Um, in, a, in a little more visual and guiding of a format to, to complete that, which is awesome. Nice, nice, nice. Awesome indeed. So you, you showed us how to visualize, you showed us uh, how to filter with queries, um, showed us how to modify some of the properties. Let's look at a scenario where you're actually, you know, maybe identifying an anomaly in your, twi in your digital twin or something like that, right? Totally. So let's if we hop back into the twins graph, and actually while, while I'm here, I do want to point out this what the scenario that we're actually modeling today is a smart city uh, DTDL ontology. Um, it's about mm -hmm. sixty models that describe all aspects of a smart city, from smart poles to smart parking lots. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll hop back into that and understand that more a little later. But let's first of all see yeah exactly what my my team has modeled and see if there's any inconsistencies that we can call out. So I'll go ahead and, and change the format here so we can see this smart city laid out all nice and pretty. Um, if we zoom in a bit, we can see that the graph is based around this Redmond node. Um, and you can see the uh, city is organized in its four districts, the south, north, and east district. Uh, to understand a bit better, um, it sounds like smart poles are associated to each of these districts and are kind of the, the center uh, for this uh, twins graph. So I'm going to go ahead and run a query. Um, to see which poll, the polls associated with each of the districts here. Um, I'm gonna choose to overlay these results to make sure that uh, we can see the results of the secondary query over our initial query to see in context um, what these, these components look like um, in the whole twins graph view. Cool, so writing this query, we can see each of our districts and polls showing up, but it looks like each of the districts has a smart pulse, has two smart poles associated with it, except for this West district. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So first of all, it's incredibly easy. It's awesome that we can recognize some in inconsistencies and anomalies in our graph. Um, but the next thing is let's go ahead and, and change that. Let's fix it um, and add the correct smart poles in there. So to do this, uh, I want to step back into the main graph uh, and see at a high level, um, rather compare two districts, the, the West District and another, um, to get a good idea of what exactly we're missing. So I'll use the uh, filter capability whoopsies, um, to effectively select the smart poles that we are looking for based on a string uh, matching system. So here we can see the East District, which is complete with two smart poles. Uh, and if I filter for the West District, uh, we can see that we're missing one of those. Digging this a little bit further, we can see that uh, the West District does contain the weather status twin and the electric vehicle charging uh, twin, but we are missing this uh, street light and air quality uh, capabilities twin and the pole associated. Okay. So, yeah. Now that we've kind of acknowledged which which twins are missing, it's uh, let's go step in and, and actually create these twins. So using the models pane, we can search for the models that we're looking for and create the associated twins uh, in on the fly. So we'll create this street light first. We will pull down the air quality observed for this West district. And finally, the last poll that we need to create for the West district. Awesome. And just like that, we've created twins based on the models that we're looking for. Um, and they are just floating right now in our graph. Next step is uh, actually relating this to our existing uh, twins graph. So based on what we our goals here, uh, we know that we want to relate this smart poll to uh, the West district. So let's go ahead and select the source twin that we're hoping for, the smart poll, and the target twin for the relationship, the West district. Right click it and we can easily add those relationships. Cool. So let's add the last relationship from the smart the smart pole we just, just created to the street light, uh, a reference street light relationship. Fantastic. Looks like now we've created a whole, uh, we've rather fixed the inconsistency that we saw before um, by adding the twins that we were missing to the West districts, which is awesome. Nice. So first step was ADT, you were able to visualize, then you're able to, to manipulate the twins and their relationships, adding what's missing and putting it all together. Um, can you actually interact with the data of the twins, right? So, so we see these um, these um, poles, smart poles are about sensors and lighting for streets, um, air quality, for example, something like that. Can I use the queries to identify uh, you know, something based on the data flowing in into the twin from the sensors? That's a great question. And especially at this stage of development, you know, we don't have any true live data flowing into this instance. So properties aren't being updated, but it's very important that we're validating scenarios that are important to, um, to our business leaders. So um, a great example of this is, you know, let's say my leadership is, is super, very caring of the air quality in these districts. Um, each of these districts has this air quality uh, capability twin that is modeling the air levels in each of the districts. So for me to be able to test and make sure that this, this scenario does work with what we've modeled, let's go ahead and, and change the values here um, to reflect unhealthy values, air quality. Here we can see a successful patch, meaning that the property was updated correctly. Um, so here we've just updated the South District air quality to be unhealthy, uh, given that twin. And we'll also go into the East District, district and update the property there as well. Awesome. So now that, now that we've updated those, or rather simulated those properties being updated um, by what would be real-time telemetry, um, we can go ahead and run a query to make sure that we're actually able to indicate which districts have this unhealthy air quality. So if I go to the saved query that I have for deteriorated air qualities, um, I'm effectively going to be pulling out all of the districts 
smart poles and air quality observed twins that are indicating a um, low air quality or rather anything that is not a good air quality. So if I run this query and check this out, we'll see what happens. Awesome. So it looks like we can see that uh, the South District and the East District did uh, show up correctly from that query. Um, and it's very important too, because our, our leadership really cares that this, this scenario works and we've, we've validated that right here. Nice. Easy, actually, pretty straightforward. You're developing, you're validating your scenarios, validating that the queries that you're using for building an application. And we'll talk about that a bit later, but uh, um, as a developer, you're building these queries that will help you actually visualize or provide information to your operators in your final application, right? Yeah, totally. Um, we're kind of making sure that the as a cloud developer with Digital Twins, you, you're kind of understanding the entire flow from you know how it's modeled as well as how the end operator will actually be seeing this data. Um, so you you got to be kind of testing along the way, and this tool really really helps with that. Yeah, and so you give us some um, glimpse at the actual ontology where this graph was fitting in, right? Um, so how about you go back there and show us more about the ontology navigation into the uh, ADT Explorer tool? Absolutely, um, and actually that, that fits in quite nicely with um, the last thing that my co my uh, teammate asked me to do, which is add a whole new uh, capability to our twins graph. Um, oh. Immediately, once you land on the, the model graph here, it's a little complex. There's a lot of you know associations here and there. So you know, clicking through this might be might take a little, a little time to understand what we're looking for. But since we kind of know that the scenario that we're trying to add has to do with crowd flow monitoring, um, we can go ahead and, and use the uh, highlighting capability to find this model directly. Um, a little bit about crowd flow monitoring, especially for construction projects, it's really good to know. Um, what the crowd flows at different times of the day along different roads are so that we can plan our construction projects correctly in the city of Redmond. So I'll hop over to the highlighting capability um, and search for a stab in the dark, uh, the crowd flow model. Awesome. It looks like zooming in a bit, we can see this crowd flow observed model uh, in context of the entire graph. Um, and we can see how one would go about modeling and creating this uh, scenario. So luckily for us, you can see the, the poll, which we have plenty of those in our twins graph, relates directly to the crowdflow observed uh, model by nature of a relationship. The crowdflow observed twin also has two components, location and address, which presumably allow you to indicate the location and address uh, within the smart city for the capability. And finally, what's great for our construction scenario uh, is you can connect the Crowdflow Observed twin to a road segment um, to indicate uh, which projects you might be uh, indicating Crowdflow for, which is awesome. So here's, this is just one example of how you can uh, dig into the graph and understand, oh, how exactly would I go about enabling this scenario or creating these, these modeling concepts in my existing twins graph? We don't nice. need to go and do that and create this in our graph right now as you uh, can kind of guess how I might add those twins in. Yep. Cool, Riley. So just out of curiosity, here uh, we're showing a smart city ontology. Where is that coming from? And you know, if I want to do smart building or energy uh, grid, so how did you guys figure how these ontologies need to be defined? Absolutely. We've been working a lot with uh, some industry experts, for example, uh, Real Estate Core. Uh, and others in other industries to build these ontologies to make it easier easier out of the box to start modeling these scenarios. You can find plenty of these on um, GitHub. Awesome, Riley. Nice walkthrough of the uh, Azure Digital Twin Explorer um, tool that you guys are working on. Um, if you want to learn more about uh, ADT Explorer, that's the nickname for it or short name for it. Go to aka.ms slash IIT show slash ADT Explorer. Riley, looking forward to have you back on the IoT show for more demos, more insights into the great tools you are building. Excited for it. Thank you, Olivia. Right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. See you soon. Bye.